Hi everyone. So we're going to do an example of finding the basis of a subspace and let's just get right into it. So first we need to prove that this is a subspace and we do this using the subspace test. So first we need to show that S is non-empty. So we'll check is uh, the zero vector an element of S. So let's check zero, 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 right? So 2x2 uh, x plus 3x3. Three three. This is just 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0, which is equal to 0. And I know x1 is also equal to 0, so I've got 0 equals 0, which means that 0 is within s, and s is non-empty. Great. OK, let's also check scalar multiplication. Is this, are we closed under scalar multiplication in S? So let's just define X to be within S, just to be super clear here. So when we say this, this means that X1 equals 2X2 plus 3X3. That's what we're implying when we say X is in S. So let's let C be some constant, okay? So what we're checking here is Cx in S. So Cx I know would be equal to Cx1, Cx2, Cx3. Those are my components. So let's try this. Uh, 2 times Cx1 plus 3 times Cx2. Well, this is equal to, well, I've got a C in both terms, so I can factor it out and I'll be left with 2x1 plus 3x2 here. And then this is, remember what we had in red above, we implied that this will be equal to, oh, and sorry, this should be, uh, this, this should be x2s, not x1s. That's just, just a writing error, right? And we've shown that, like we said, since x is in s, we know that what we have in brackets right here, that needs to be equal to x1. So this is just Cx1. So there, I've shown exactly what I'm, I'm showing uh, that defines what of the vector is in S, right? The first component is equal to 2 times the second component plus 3 times the third. So this shows that Cx is within S, and we're closed under scalar multiplication. Let's try another. Let's try that we're closed under vector addition. And we need to define another vector. Let y be in S. Remember, this means y1 equals 2y2 plus 3y3. So x plus y, these components are x1 plus y1, x2 plus y2, x3 plus y3. So 2 times the second component, x2 plus y2, plus 3 times the third component. Let's expand this out. We're given 2x2 plus 3x3. Right, I'm just, I'm just reorganizing a little bit. And then 2y2 plus 3y3. And you might notice this here in my red. That is x1, because x is an s. That's what we defined it as. And we know that this green part, that's going to be y1, because we defined y in s. So this is just x1 plus y1, which is exactly what we wanted to get it into, right? That 2 times the second component plus 3 times the third must be equal to the first component. So we've just shown now that x plus y is also within s, which means that s is closed under vector addition. So I know I went through this a little bit fast. I've got a more thorough uh, video that I was my most recent video that I just posted before this, uh, where we go through a lot more examples and we do it a little bit slower. Um, but I guess the, the point of this, I want to go th through the process of finding the basis of this. So how do we find the basis of this? What, what I'm trying to do here is trying to find some 
some linearly independent vectors where I take the linear combination of them, it's going to give me that vector x, which is an s. So what I'm going to start with is up here, that scalar equation that we've been given. Oops, let's bring that down here. And this, is, this is what we're going to try to start with. Okay. Oops. Okay, great. So remember what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to rewrite x1, x2, and x3. I'm trying to write it as a linear combination. And what I can do here, if I, if I have one equation and three unknowns, in order to create free variables, I'm going to need two, right? It's the same way that if I have if I have three unknowns and three equations, that's how many I would need to solve, right? But if I had three unknowns and only two equations, I would need one free variable. So in this case, if I've got three unknowns and only one equation, I'm going to need two free variables. And I'm talking about free variables now, and you'll, you'll see in just a minute. So I know x1 is 2x2 plus 3x3. And x2 and x3, if I just let those be my free variables, meaning that like I don't know what they are, then I can just write them in as this x2 and x3. And you'll see that since these are just, just numbers, right? I can represent it as x2 times some vector plus x3 times another vector. And remember, this is just, this is exactly what a linear combination is. So you'll see that x2, I've got 2, 1, 0, right? Just reading that down from up here, 2, 1, and then I've got 0 x2s in my last component. And then in the other vector, I've got, I've got, uh, oops, that should be a 3. I've got 3 x3s in the first component, 0 in the second and then I've got one in the last. Meaning, this is so this is a linear combination, right? It's exactly what I was trying to do. These two vectors, when I take the linear combination of them, it's gonna give me a vector x, which is an s, right? I know it's, I know it's an s because that's what I started with. This is the equation that lets it be an s. So remember, there's one little thing that we're missing here before we can say that these two vectors are a basis for s. And it's that we need to say that show her that these vectors are linearly independent. And remember, linearly independent means that I can't write them as a linear combination of each other. But since I only have two vectors here, like two one zero, the linear combination. If I'm trying to show that it cannot be represented as the linear combination of the other vectors, there's only one other vector, three zero one. So when I'm taking the linear combination of just a single vector, there's nothing to add to it. So all I'm doing is scaling it up and down. So when I only have two vectors, I know that they're linearly independent if they're not scalar multiples of each other, right? And it's very clear here that they're not scalar multiples. I've got a, because I've got this zero here and a zero here, right? And this two and the three, like they're, they're very clearly not scalar multiples. So since they are since and since they're not zero and they're not parallel which you know which are scalar multiples then therefore we can say that two one zero or let me let me just say they are linearly independent. So therefore, 210 and 301 is a basis for S.